There's a monster inside all of us. Now I'll show you what you really are. Welcome to an episode of Curiosity Cure. Last week, in the previous video we did on Arcane, we looked at Silco's past and confirmed the identity of Singed as the doctor who worked for Silco. Check out that video if you haven't already. While it was subtle, there were indisputable cues to verify his identity. However, there's another character that the community is confident in being a champion, despite there not being concrete evidence. So in this video, we are going to attempt to substantiate the claim of Vander being Warwick, and see if we can find any definitive proof. But before we get started, if you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing and giving this video a like. In order to prove our hypothesis of Vander being Warwick, we first need to understand Warwick's lore. Fortunately, there is extensive material to be explored. Warwick is a wolfhound beast. He was formerly a human that was altered by the transmutational experiments of Singed. Now he roams the deepest and darkest alleys of Zong, arduously trying to quench his perpetual thirst for blood. Many think of him as nothing more than a demented monster. But deep within, lies the soul of a man, a former gangster born of Zong, who long ago has put down his blade, and took up a new identity to strive for a different life. A life far from the violence he has grown up knowing. However, despite his adamant resolution, he could never escape the sins of his past. Eventually, it would catch up to him and be the proprietor of his demise. He would no longer remember his past, like in death, his life flashed before him. Memories only come to him as fragments, before inevitably lost to the boundless torment, endured at the hands of Singed. He desperately tries to recall how he ended up here, as the deranged scientist expertly carved into him with a scalpel, installing pumps and hoses to inject mutagenic chemicals into his bloodstream, seeking to transform him. Weeks have passed, though time soon becomes irrelevant, as he struggles to remember anything other than the endless agony he suffers. He desperately tries to fight it, regurgitating out the toxins that sought to change him, his tears are replaced by the acidic toxins that burn the ground. Nevertheless, his efforts would be futile and his body would eventually give out. Singed, thinking he has failed, disposed of the cadaver in a charnel pit deep in Zong slums. However, death proved to be the ultimate catalyst needed for Warwick's transformation. While laying on the mountain pile of corpses, the chemicals finally rushed into every fiber of his existence. His body contorted in unnatural ways, bones cracking and bending, teeth protruding, muscles tearing and growing back stronger. Now reborn as a bloodthirsty beast whose sole purpose is to hunt. Warwick evidently came from a tragic history. It is scattered with painful memories. Lest he remembers a time before the agony. Psychologists coined the term dissociative amnesia, for patients who have lost memories of part or all of their former selves. It is often due to extreme duress, which causes the brain to motivate forgetness. This is largely what we see happening to Warwick as he struggles to remember any reminisce of his former identity. Anyways, now we look at the history of Vander, and see if it aligns with that of Warwick. In the opening of Arcane, Vander saves Powder and Vi from what we suspect to be a fierce battle between Zong syndicates and enforcers. Fast forward a couple of years, he is the father figure and caretaker to the two girls. Leaving behind his dark violent past, he becomes the bridge that safeguards the peace between the two cities of Zong and Piltover. Instead of stealing from the people of Piltover, he polices his people to make sure things don't get out of hand. Instead of fighting the enforcers, he works with them to ensure that no blood is spilled on either city. However, after Vi, Powder, and her crew, attempted to pull a heist in Piltover, leaving a massive explosion, the enforcers came looking for the perpetrators. Vander, realizing that it was Vi and Powder who did it, refused to give her up to the enforcers. His passive attitude towards the enforcers' aggressive investigation, lost him favor with the people of Zong. This altercation allowed Silco, a former brother, now bitter rival, to get the upper hand, bribe the enforcers and win him the support of former Vander followers. Not long after, Silco tested Singed's first variation of a mutagenic potion known as Shimmer on a boy. It caused him to grow in size, strength, and speed. The boy, with his newfound powers, kills the sheriff enforcer, Benzo, and captures Vander. Silco hands Vander over to Singed, who plans to use him for his experiments. However, Vi and her crew with the exception of Powder, arrive to save Vander. They work together to hold off Silco's men while simultaneously freeing Vander and digging an escape route. But before they could escape, Powder arrives and throws one of her bombs which caused a massive explosion that trapped Vi, and killed both of her crew. Vander, now free from his restraint, attempts to fight the mutated boy, but Silco stabs him in the back with a knife, and throws him into the fire to die. However, Vander manages to grab a hold and consume a vial of shimmer, and transforms. He carries Vi out of the fire before succumbing to his injuries. 
while he is presumed to be dead, we know this is not likely the case. According to the lore, singed potions are known to have accelerated healing effects. This can be justified by his early research into the axolotl-like creature named Rio. The creatures are known to have extraordinary healing effects, able to regrow entire limbs. It is probable that Singed was able to synthesize Rio's healing abilities, with that of the power enhancing alchemical properties to create Shimmer. While confirming that Vander is still alive doesn't necessarily dictate him being Warwick. Throughout the first act, there are several elements of foreshadowing that are just too significant to be passed on as being nothing. There's a monster inside all of us. Now I'll show you what you really are. This subtle dialogue that is likely missed on a first watch, proves crucial as it matches up with text excerpts remarkably well. In the Warwick bio, it specifically said, awakening the beast within, and not turning into a beast. In addition, the lore also mentions him remembering an old blade. Covered in blood, which in all likelihood, refers to the one that he was stabbed by Silco. After falling to his demise, Vander rose again, reborn by the Shimmer's power. This draws a strong parallel to that of Warwick being reborn after being tossed by Singed into the pits it is likely to serve as more foreshadowing of what is to come. In the final moments of Act 1, we see Powder calls out for Violet next to Vander's body. In the lore, he recalls a girl screaming a name. A name that is likely Vi. Last but not least, in the bio, it says that Singed would reveal its subject's true nature, that of a good man. Formerly a gangster that tried to escape from his past sins. There is no better candidate that fits this description better than Vander. Zong, a society filled with opportunist criminals, has few good men as it is. One that is notable enough to be mentioned would eliminate any other contenders. Finally, we look at the in game interaction between Warwick, Vi, and Jinx. Who taught you how to punch? You would yeah. let me forget. Vander raised and took care of the girls. He most likely taught Vi how to defend herself against the dangers of Zong. Whereas with Powder, he is referring to the moment leading up to his supposed demise. Where he retained his consciousness and hears Powder calls out for Violet. While there is no definitive answer, as the second arc doesn't remotely mention Vander, it is likely that he will make an appearance by the third, unless he is really dead. With the overwhelming evidence in support of our hypothesis, we can almost say with certainty that Vander will eventually become Warwick. It is truly an accomplishment for Ride to write such intricate lore so far in advance of Arcane. While the majority of viewers are captivated by the alluring plot of Arcane, the veterans of Rintera lore will surely satiate many of the visual gaps over the years. Anyhow, that's all for today. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like, and let me know in the comment section below what you want to see next. There is more arcane content in the near future, so subscribe and stay tuned. And as always, have a good day!